Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left, upper left hand corner, we got Nyokan starting as the pink Terran. Bottom right hand corner, we got Jayun starting as the white Protoss. This is on Vermeer, game one. Jayun taking it convincingly, just got very, very aggressive to start. And had just was able to delay that third base at the six o'clock location forever and really a clinic on how to how to just press a, that that's how you win with protoss honestly I, I feel like that's the cleanest methodology is just frustrate your Terran opponent may abuse those positional advantages delay 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 and continue to just build your economy and then just yeah play strong from there there's actually a really interesting article by the way out on team liquid that talks about build order victories across all of the replays that are on a certain archive and they looked at timing versus wins i had actually nyokin actually uh nyokin artosis actually took a look at it the other day which is where i found it i just kind of hopped on stream and he was taking a look uh i recommend checking it out it's very interesting it was basically looking at when games were won in comparison i would love to see that at with pro replays basically with pro replays or a and above or in actually particular mmr ranges because within particular MMR ranges, it might actually reflect when build orders stop working, actually. That could get that could be really interesting. But what I found also interesting across all the matchups, which is I think a testament to Brood War, is granted there are still advantages one direction or the other, but after a certain time period, the win rate almost nearly went to 50% across the field. Usually it was like 47 one direction or something, something small where it was significant, uh, statistically significant, but not not where it's like, oh man, this is a totally imbalanced matchup after this period of time, uh, generally. It was kind of interesting. Anyway, Zealot getting skipped. We're going to see an Assimilator on 12th for Jayun, and it looks like immediately going to get the workers in there. Nyokin setting up maybe to go for a front door seal. He has tacked on gas to start, so it does reserve the option to tack on factories and get aggressive. SCVs making the rounds. I don't think the Dragoon's going to be in time or the Zealot's not getting constructed. Point being, it's not going to be in time to stop the scout from Nyokin. Jayun, in the, mo in the meantime, not scouting at all, which makes me think he's thinking about going one gate or two gate into Robo. And then expansion on this map. We'll have to see. But at the moment, or maybe just recognizing that the front door might be blockaded regardless and trying to play it off that, we do have a factory being constructed, single SCV. So old school build here for Nyokin, uh, for Nyokin, getting that single SCV on gas. I think mostly, maybe, to provide him flexibility. In the meantime, switching it up and going caddy corner. So went bottom left and didn't see the probe scout, assumed a probe scout would be coming, and because he didn't run into it, decided to check the opposite corner. Unfortunately, if he had just stuck, that's unlucky, if he had just stuck on the standard, uh, the standard scouting pattern, he would have gotten the information he was looking for. In the meantime, the first Dragoon moving its way to scout and going towards the north to do so. We've got three Marines out already, however. So I think Jayun feeling pretty feisty after game one and the scouting information there. I don't think he, well, he's not gonna get the SCV kill with this Dragoon. He's just gonna soften it up potentially for the next Dragoon. And knowing that SCV's on the way, might be able to blockade the forward ramp. Not able to deny the fact that it was a Nexus follow-up, and with the timing of that, Nyokin should immediately recognize, oh, not able to get the SCV out, but should immediately recognize that it was one gate into expand. He's dropping the expansion himself, and actually fielding forward his Marines to engage this Dragoon as quickly as possible, which is very wise considering every all of the antics that happened in game one. That also allows that Vulture to go ahead and sneak out of the corner and maybe apply some pressure, so Jane's going to have to play a lot more passively this time with the potential vulture threat out there. We are seeing a machine shop drop and that natural expansion being constructed. Did Marine took a shot maybe right there. Waiting on range, we are seeing the robotics facility as far as the follow-up, although it was Nexus and Gateway ahead of that. And a second Gateway being tacked on for Jayun. Looks like some mines being researched on top of a siege tank and SCVs being transferred to the natural expansion. Kind of an odd location of that barracks. Brennioka now repositioning it <clears throat> towards the front. Maybe he was a little bit concerned. Dragoon's fanning out, actually looking for the Vulture. And it looks like the Vulture just hanging out here at the 6 o'clock location, just relying on the fact that Jayun was probably going to have Dragoons out in the front and was maybe waiting 
for the mine upgrade just to make sure the mine complement gets out before it ends up getting destroyed. Those initial mines can be absolutely huge in this matchup for scouting information versus follow up reavers and a lot of other a lot of other play. And he already confirmed that the Nexus is there. So making sure he gets maximum value here. Observatory just about online. Range is finished. Okay, mine's finished. Now the question is, is where does Nyokan opt to place these? I wonder how many Protoss players actually actually try to guess that mine timing and press up aggressively, but the central canal, I'm not sure why I'm wanting to call it a canal, there's no water there, but central area getting blockaded a bit, and we actually have a pole here. The four marines and two additional vultures making their way across the map, that third being cut off with a single mine there. Interesting play here. We've got four dragoons on the front, which should be sufficient, and some pylons to block. No siege. So this is gonna be difficult for Nyokan to pull off, and he didn't bring an SCV either. So now playing kind of an off-kilter aggressive play out on the front of the map, and I'm wondering if he's going to try to bait these Dragoons into those Spider Mines. We'll have to see. So keep in mind, only one, sorry, only two Spider Mines left. With this forward Vulture, there's no SCV to follow. So this is basically donating troops. So one Dragoon down, two Dragoon down. Some decent damage to so the Marines and the Vulture might be able to get some additional kills, but not quite able to. I don't know if I like that trade. So two Dragoons... And I think what it did do for Nyokan at the very least is it provide a good amount of information as far as the troop count to follow. But after that initial damage, Jayun thinking about going ahead and grabbing an additional base, cleared the mine here at the third. And yeah, this is aggressive play. Also dropped a Citadel to Dune at the natural expansion. Now, yeah, yeah. Out to Chatland and Twitch, by the way. In the meantime, Stargate already. So Jayun thinking that Nyokan is just going to go for a timing, either plus one or plus two and isn't going to scout this and this is a very rapid transition into arbiter this is something akin to two base arbiter but a third base has been tacked on from jayun maybe felt like okay that was just some so much of a measly attack and cost you that early siege tank i can play the pressure from here but let's see if nyokin is able to discover it he might be able to discover the third but it's going to be quite some time before he decides to drop comps at and in that time that's going to be very fast arbiter play another nexus here at the three o'clock are you kidding me this is very this is the jayun protoss play i'm very accustomed to seeing this very greedy aggressive economic style let's see if the vulture so it's, it hasn't discovered the fourth i i think the vulture got eyes at the pylons at the three o'clock and unfortunately for Naoki, he's going to think okay this is just three bases and play from there, but I don't know if he recognizes, first of all, that the tech is already on its way. A third gateway, so this was only two gate of production, and I think these two gateways remain silent for an extremely long period of time. Jayun gonna start pumping up. Very risky play on his part. Yeah, Nyokan just gonna grab his third, so he's playing very passively against this, and that's gonna cost him. He's thinking, okay, I'm just going three bases, going to even up, but Jayun's already at four bases and has already launched tech towards the late game. He's gonna move up to the four gateway count. I'm still waiting for that Arbiter Tribunal somewhere out on the field. Looks like it's morphing at an off-kilter location there at the natural expansion. But that's going to allow very early Arbiters, which is going to allow very early Stasis potentially, or a recall opportunity. I think Stasis more than anything, which is going to mean Jayun's not only gonna have a big surge of troops, a strong economy, but he's gonna have a lot of spellcast to work with a lot earlier than typical in this matchup. So, and yeah, just now a fourth factory still a single machine shop. So we're going we're going up to five factories off the plus one weapon. So there might be some action to follow this up. But is it too late? Jayun starting to fan forward, and, I, and actually I don't think this is to push. He's already built that third, so I take it back. The additional factories are just to fill in the production margin on a safe third base grab. The Dragoon's peeling forward to go for kind of a soft defensive encapsulation just in case some vultures were sneaking their way out. And yeah, now that third base has been grabbed, Jayun's already been saturated at four bases for a bit of time now. He just needs to get these probes in action, tacking on even more, just a massive amount of gateways. He's going to be very, very powerful and in a prime position to deal with a 2-1 timing which is unfortunate. So 
We'll see how Nyokun plays it from here. I'm hoping he drops a second machine shop. Just comps added. Not sure if he hit anything detection wise or not. He might have seen the Stargate up because he did build. I actually never mind. I think these Goliaths might have just been defensive Goliaths versus shuttle. And it's not like he needs to overbuild here because this isn't carriers. Uh, he's just going to have this Arbiter out extremely rapidly. But now a 20 supply lead, which is where Jayun wants to be. And that basically indicates that he's caught up in supply compared to Nyokin. And now it's just going to surge from here. As long as Jayun stays on the macro cycles. He's already got a good amount of Dragoons folded out again to prevent those Vultures from making any sort of venture out. The Observer might miss the Siege Tank engaging these Dragoons. Yeah, the weakened Dragoons going to get picked off first. And a couple more Dragoons going to get pushed back. Looks like Naokin. Let's see if he goes for a fourth or stages back just for 3-2. I think even if he sits back for the 3-2 play, Jane's still in a good situation to maintain that economic lead. Looks like he's already sending out a probe to pick up the 6. Yeah, he's just playing this economically aggressive from here. He's just going to, I assume, going to go ahead and grab that 6 o'clock base. Nyokin, I think, looking at all this, is just going to try to sit. This is a very encapsulated, protected three bases to work off of to just make your way towards maximum upgrades and a maxed army and start moving from there. But that first Arbiter already out. There's going to be more Arbiters to follow things up. <clears throat> Recalls will be available. Looks like, let's see if Jayun actually grabs another two bases. He's grabbed the six o'clock, which is going to put him a bonus. You want to stay one base ahead as Protoss, and this is going to be the second base on top of that, which he can hold. 30 supply lead is opened up, by the way, although Ni Nyokin doing a pretty good job of macroing behind this. And I'm not sure if that's just there's so much for Jayun to manage. Yeah, he's missing some of the gateway cycles. Otherwise, this would be even worse. Um, in the meantime, yeah, second Arbiter is going to be out in the field. Six o'clock base is up and running. Upper right-hand corner is being sealed off as well. Vulture at least trying to get up there and scout that. I don't know if it's going to be in time. We have recall upgrading, which is going to be an extra option in Jayun's pocket. But we'll see if he, he decides to go for the aggressive recall guerrilla style down the line. Because honestly, I think he could go just for a full-on army smash. Potentially. Now, as soon as Nayo can just uh, make some maneuvers, or he could just wait until he hits two, uh, 200 supply, do a few recalls, just 20 supply off, and I want to see. Yeah, okay, that was that doesn't count on the recall. He's got a lot of gateways here to work with. A lot of gateways, a lot of resources to work with. Three o'clock base, saturated upper right hand corner being grabbed. Is he going to grab the bottom left? He might actually end up with. A, sometimes Protoss do that, do this where they grab too many bases. Uh, basically more bases than they can effectively mine, which leaves them a little bit of stranded material out in territory. But sometimes that's worth it. You just drop the 400 resources because you, you can spare it. And then it's like, okay, down the line, I know I have some outs to work with. But Observer getting picked off. We have a science vessel finally out in the field. I don't think EMP is upgraded. The Vulture is trying to chase a lot of this back, feeling very strong with the plus two plus one armor, but Nyokin's basically stayed on his side of the map, has sat and macroed up. Jayun's 10 supply away from Max, and it looks like he is setting up to go for a recall across the northern edge. Is he going to go for the third, or is he going to go for the main? Looks like there's a lot of mines already well placed, and oh, this might be an opportunity for Nyokin to get back in it, because recall right over the lines, and a huge army decimation right there. But the armory might get picked off, and that would be a big... Big win for Jayun, able to slow down one of those really long... So yeah, that'll delay an additional upgrade. So didn't turn out as badly as it could have there for Jayun. He certainly lost a lot of army, but able to pick out at least the armory. So that's a sufficient win. I think a vulture discovered bottom left and exploded here on that cannon in the meantime. is keeping an eye on the minimap. But uh, Naoken actually getting the supply lead after that. Another recall staging up, maybe to go to the natural expansion. We don't have any mines there, but we do have four turrets in place and an army nearby. Naoken, if he gets a move on, he's got the superior army upgrades currently, and the, the larger army supply to maybe exploit that failed recall. Some gateways being placed top right, a gateway being placed bottom left. Yet yeah, for Jayun to do that recovery style trying to find what trades he can losing three dragoons for his effort i think he only softened up some vultures wasn't able to get a lot else but now with that 
army moving out, Nyokin going to uh, have to deal with a recall at his natural expansion, Jane just sliding in where he's not to keep him back. This time, the recall landing, the Arbiter getting taken out nigh immediately. And a solid defense from Nyokin, but this is still him not grabbing additional territory. Looks like he is trying to take the fourth despite this at the 12 o'clock location. And clear this out, but let's see if... Uh, so, what was the Arbiter advantage right there was expended a little bit there by Jayun, but he's still managing to hold a massive amount of territory. He basically has already cut the map in half. So let's see if he's able to now get good trades versus Nyokin and clear a lot of this army up. Nyokin looking for targets to engage. Some Zealots marching up with Dragoons going to merge with that army to maybe engage top right, wipe that out. So I think this is going to be a clockwise assault cycle for Nyokin and Jayun doing the thing Protoss needs to do in this scenario, which is be everywhere your opponent isn't and force them back defensively. So a large amount of Dragoons and Zealots sneaking to the lower corridor here. We've got only a single Siege tank and a lot of Spider Mines in between. And yeah, the Dragoons actually can afford just to work with a lot of that. Nyokin forced to draw back and that delays the assault top right, which gives Jayun more time to mine and more time to get armies and more time to find opportunities to poke holes, get that Arbiter energy up, do things along those lines. This is a huge amount of bunch tanks in this location. High Templar out at the top location. This base looks like might be taken out bit by bit. A Dark Templar on the low ground cleaning up some siege tanks. Nyokin re-engaging with some additional units. Looks like some Comset able to clean up what's left. But Jayun cutting off the reinforcements and Arbiter between both points as well. Is he going to get a decent stasis off? Not before that Arbiter explodes. But a lot of tanks left unseaged with Zealots on top of them, Jayun doing some fantastic troop movement here to engage this army. So he's going to end up losing a lot of his army, but he actually got a pretty decent trade out of a lot of it. Still behind, down 30 supply, but still holding a lot of troops. Needs to retreat, rebuild rapidly. Looks like currently he's still holding top right. A little bit of a late size storm right there, but needs to refill, the, uh, refill that army before Nyokin's able to do... A lot more massive damage. In the meantime, Nyokin's mined out at his main. 12 o'clock base is grabbed, but not yet mining. Trying to focus on wiping out Jayun's holdings. Moving the rest of this army top right, it looks like this base is going to get crushed pretty rapidly. Does Jayun have another army to backstab another location? It looks like a Zealot is going to be able to disrupt that 9 o'clock location. Some Zealot spawning, getting another siege tank top right. He's got another gateway grouping and some additional probes being bought, uh, built bottom left. It looks like the probes are being transferred to the main to the bottom left. Vulture's sneaking in, making sure a recall isn't going to disrupt the party here at the 9 o'clock location. And Jayun's starting to filter troops that direction. So has lost. Looks like he's giving up on the top right. Still going to try to spawn a couple Dark Templar to make something happen there. Mostly to fr uh, frustrate Nyokin, but Nyokin's still steamrolling forward. Plus three weapons on the way. That's going to be considerably delayed. So keep in mind that losing that armory here could be a decent advantage for Jayun at least at this stage because he's staving off that plus two weapons for a while. In the meantime, he's got plus two weapons, plus one armor, and is slowly building resources that direction. Has a pretty sizable army mid-map. Nyokin, you can see, filtering a lot of territory. Has just left the two siege tanks top right to clear everything out. The last few resources being squeezed out of that location, and Jayun seeing a trail of troops across the top middle, looking to again catch tanks on siege. A few tanks are siege, now sieging up. Just going to attack and back out. Was looking for a hold a poke at the 9 o'clock location. A zealot wandering its way in, at least able to clear two mines, but that base is going to hold otherwise. Top right is now down. Probes, they got on it. I think they're just on gather move, so they're going to explode across here. Back to the 9 o'clock location, Jayun continuing to try to press this, and he's going to find again the tanks unseaged on that high ground, but he's got too much metal there and not enough feet on the ground, so going to go ahead and retreat for now, try to find a better value trade someplace else on the map. Sweeping the Zelts to the south, he wants to try to string Nyokin out here, split that army about, 
and then find a different engagement point, Nyokin, having taken out top right, is now making his way bottom left. The Zealot's able to get on top of the Siege Tanks as they're sieging. Looks like they're able to skill, uh, get a few kills. The Science Vessel getting wiped out as well. And Jayun now, he needs to engage some of this, get that Siege Tank count lower, and start getting some map control back, because Nyokin has made it bottom left. And the Siege Tanks, ooh, beautiful Psy Storm on the Siege Tanks. More Psy Storm, wiping out those what's left. It looks like the probe's going to retreat to top left. But Jayun does need to start thinking about holding some of these bases. Because as Nyokin takes out bottom left, yeah, 6 o'clock base is up, but that bottom right's going to mine out. Keep in mind, this third was taken pretty rapidly, so I'm not sure how many resources that's going to have over the long haul. And the 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock, as well as the third, are humming, heavily, uh, humming well for Nyokin, although he is down to 55 workers right this second. High Temple are getting picked off mid-map by those vultures. The bottom left continuing to get impaled by these siege tanks. Looks like the natural expansion is just there to try to buy some time. Some siege tanks being built as well. We'll see if some Dark Templar get built. EMP over the High Templar to mitigate additional defense. It looks like they're going to have to morph into an Archon if they're going to participate in any further battles. And I'm looking for... It looks like I missed a 12 o'clock engagement where Jayun able to strike... I don't know if that was a recall or not. Sorry about that. 12 o'clock, big attack... Able to halt Nyokin's mining there, which was huge. First of all, reducing that troop count, but also critically taking that base down and evening things up as far as the economic spread a bit. Another large army grouping up. We do have an Arbiter with it. I'm wondering if it's going to try to clean up or save bottom left. Potentially not. The Dragoons now cleared out along with that army at the 12 o'clock. Looks like there was something that briefly morphed top right, but immediately was taken out as well. Nyokin trying to build a command center. I think he wants to float that to top left rather than taking that third, although he could just build the third otherwise. Jayun trying to sneak in underneath to again take out that 9 o'clock. It looks like able to drop a Psy Storm. Unfortunately, dropped a Stasis with the Psy Storm, so not getting a lot, but the Zealots able to swarm the Siege Tanks once again. And that is going to allow them some additional kills, some beautiful troop engagement here. Nyokin's going to have to retreat from the bottom left if he's going to hold this 9 o'clock. And he absolutely needs to hold this 9 o'clock base. It is critical to staying in this match. More reinforcements retreating and trying to reinforce. It looks like Nyokin has managed to push back the troops that remain. The Arbiter still taking hits along that 9 o'clock spoke, but that has briefly delayed. The continued push up to the bottom left. It looks like Nyokin now gathering up to do the final push. And that is going to leave, as soon as that's taken out, that's going to leave Jayun to mining, it looks like, three bases. Three bases versus two, which puts him actually still in a pretty good scenario. And right now he's actually opened up a 40 supply lead, but there's still a lot of siege tanks on the ground. And a lot of Jayun's army currently quite scattered, just relying on, it looks like, zealots. They are able to jump on top of these siege tanks as Nyokin trying to move across smaller groupings and he's getting punished for it time and time again. Jayun doing a fantastic job with scouting, pushing up, getting in and wiping that out. And that is critical siege tanks to take out. That's the big portion of that Terran army that you want to assault. Now Zealot's marching in. The tank's still not sieged. Is it going to be sufficient? Zealot's getting on top of the siege tanks. They now have plus three weapons, which means they're going to shred through this metal a little bit more rapidly than usual. The Arbiter there and no comps at, which means... Well, never mind. There is some detection right there briefly. But now that army bottom left has been wiped out, and Jayun still has a Nexus rebuilding. The command center also, that was, it looked like, in that bottom left-hand corner, being lifted off and retreated. And all of a sudden, Nyokin in a lot of trouble. Doesn't, he's got a bank, but doesn't have a massive bank to work with. He hasn't been able to replenish his SCVs. He hasn't been able to retake that 12 o'clock base. And Jayun, in the meantime, has persisted in his mining. He's going to re-grab the natural expansion bottom left. Let's see if he makes any moves top right as well. Goliath looking to defend that 9 o'clock. And Nyokin, ha he's got a lot of trouble. It looks like he's going to try to fill in the gap with some vultures. Vultures are going to be able to engage these probes that we're looking to migrate out. Able to pick off some High Templar as well. More probes going to get taken out. Very valuable vultures right there. Buying Nyokin some time. 12 o'clock base just starting to get, excuse me, back in operation. Jayun actually dropping closer to Nyokin's worker count right this second. The 3 o'clock base is mined out. 
Natural Expansion's basically mined out. The third's still holding, but it's very close to mined out. But in the meantime, Jayun's grabbed three fresh bases to work with. That nine o'clock is gonna last a while, but Nyokin cannot rely on it. He's gotta secure that 12 o'clock and he needs to get another base on top of that. Otherwise, Jayun's just gonna be able to continually oversupply him. Right now he's up 60 supply and looking for another engagement at the nine o'clock, recognizing that Nyokin has a massive amount of territory to try to defend. SCV's fleeing, recognizing they're not gonna have sufficient defense and that is just going to cost them their lives. So, and that is resources that Nyokin did not, he could not afford to sink. Really needed those SCVs alive and getting towards that 12 o'clock base or some other location mining. And now he's shut down at the 9 o'clock, still not saturated at the 12 o'clock. And his third base is just about out of resources. I believe with that maneuver, Jayun may have sealed the game. Continuing to press great stasis on a number of siege tanks. Just clearing the mines with the Zelts forward. And there's not a lot of defense otherwise. GG from Nyokin. Great play from Jayun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.